there is nothing more satisfying than a McDonald's breakfast sandwich. I get this stuff up. The triple stuff up. Hope you all doing alright. This morning, I am going to Guardian Radio. I am parked outside McDonald's because I'm going to eat this first. Guardian Radio is down the street. I'm going to go on Guardian Radio this morning and be talking about myself a little bit and also Bahamian entertainers. So yeah, we're going to see how this goes. So y'all stay tuned for that. Let me let me finish eating my sandwich, all right? Hey, what's good, guys? I am here on Guardian Radio. This is Kermit, the infamous Kermit. He is the behind the scenes and everything. And this is the person that we're going to meet up today. I'm going to go. Her mind is on the phone right now. She's setting up things. But yeah, yeah this is... <laughs> <laughs> trying to catch him together. So yeah, we about to go on. And uh, y'all, y'all be Eddie ready. is definitely the magic man. But Eddie, just before we start, I got just one quick piece of magic to touch on okay. before we start the uh-huh. show. Uh-huh. We going dead quick this morning. Uh-huh. Damn, Minister Bannister. <laughs> the, the, the seat, the bastion of your power as a citizen in the vote, and these guys couldn't even print new voters' cards? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Every vaccination card is a brand new, hard, plastic, proper 21st century data card. But you've given people a voters' card, scorching off information, mm-hmm. and it. rewriting on it in red. Red ink, yep, yep. My mother used to say, red, uh, "Red, red marking, red ink is like um, disrespectful." That's why. That's why when you get a question wrong on a test, it's written in, in it's marked in red ink. If only we would listen to the teachers. <laughs> anyway, so Blaine, Blaine was taking magic props mm-hmm. and turning in them into something more and no. making more uh, intricate tricks with them. No, not not necessarily. He did the same tricks, but he did them in, like out on the street so people could see that, hey, this is a thing. It's not just a cheesy trick. Uh-huh. And, and, and and that's what I like about the type of magic that I do, because I'm not all for like the expensive props or the big stage things or whatever, you know, like those things that cost millions of dollars. I just like the simple things because the simple things is what get people. You so know you what can't I'm saying? make my BPL bill disappear. Uh, unfortunately, I no. mean it's a small bill. <laughs> unfortunately, it's a big problem, no. Right? <laughs> so, I'd, I'd need I'd need I'd need a team for that. But can, you, <laughs> can you make things disappear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've I've done that like coins, cards, small objects. Like I do things like that on a regular, and I and I, and that's one of the things that I um love to do. And it's, my I'm, boys make cars disappear. <laughs> I, that might be a different kind of magic. kind of magic right there. I don't know what that one. We see y'all gentlemen out there. <laughs> so, um, I got the balloons a little in the middle of my um, magic career, and I gotta give a huge shout out to um, Baldy. He's 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 um he's in um, America. He's uh, Baldy the clown. Mm-hmm. He um when I, he used to be a member of the magic shop in um, New York, eighty five O E Queens Boulevard, Rogues Magic and Fun Shop. That's where Evenings of Wonder is, was. That's where I performed on stage for the first time. I got to give a huge shout out. I got to give a shout out to um, my boy Omar and his wife Lavinia because I told them to be listening in on the radio show. So if they ain't listening, they missed the shout out. So too bad. They 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 in New York. But um, we were all members of the magic shop, and Baldy walks up to me and tells me, "Hey, I know you like to do magic, but you really need to do balloons because I know the balloons are something that that could actually work. Magic is good. Don't get me wrong, but." With a balloon, you, you get a lot more stuff or whatever. So you get a lot more bang for your buck, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, okay. Years later, I took his advice because I didn't listen right away. I was young and silly. But, you know, I, I did it. And, and now I'm, I'm, I'm doing balloons and magic. And, and it's like a lot, of pe- a lot of people know me for my magic. A lot, a lot of people know me for balloons. And that's, that's what I do. Every time, every time it's, it, it's something dis- disappears, it's always a joke attributed to a magician. It, it, it's never anything else. Yeah, yeah. It's never, whenever something disappears or they want something to disappear, it's always yeah, a, we a joke. We be just losing y'all and abusing y'all. Like, all dude, like, come on, man. Like, we, we, we do other things, too, but, you know? But tell, tell me about it. Tell me about it. What are, the, what are the range of tricks that you do from easiest to hardest? Uh, I... I, how can I say that? I don't like to gauge um anything from easy to hardest because okay. whenever whenever someone asks me 
What's the hardest thing I've done? My answer is always anything that I don't know how to do yet. I got you. Because, because I mean, I don't know how to do it yet. And that, that's my outlook on life for everything. Like, if I don't know how to do it, it's going to be hard because I don't know how to do it. Like, I'm currently teaching myself how to play guitar. That's hard right now. But if I learn how to play it, then it'll be easy. You know what I'm saying? Man, look here. You need to go speak at Ministry of Education. Ah. We, no, I mean, we, it's, it's simple but profound, right? Huh? It's simple but profound. And it's some, something that young people need to hear. Well, that it'll always appear hard when you start. Mm -hmm. you got to get past the start mm -hmm. for it to get better. Amen to that. Absolutely. So, yeah. All right. My issue with um, the orange economy is that it doesn't... Like, it, it's not being paid enough attention to here in this country. The being an artist is multi-layered, and there are lots of there are things, lots of that things. Have to be focused on at yeah, the same time. Yeah, but the root of it is being able to do those things and, and get paid for it. Yeah. Okay? Because, I mean, I don't, care, I don't care how much people say, oh, well, you know, it's for the love of the craft or whatever. It's for the love of this and it's for the love of that, and you should love doing it. Yeah. Yes, we love what we do. But we still got to eat. And unfortunately, bills still have to be paid. Mm -hmm. So artists here in the Bahamas are... like, And, and I, 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 I really want to make sure I'm not reaching here by saying this. But after sitting and thinking about it, I always, like me and a few friends, were conversating. And I feel that... And I, I hope I'm not saying anything wrong on the radio by saying this. Artists in the Bahamas are glorified prostitutes given the given the fact on two on two results be based on the based on the results of based on the idea of the job we chose for ourselves and how the government treats us okay okay so, so because i mean because if you think about it when we do art for people it's like when when an artist performs for a person the person is paying for the experience of seeing this art. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they're paying for the memory of it. After they get that memory, they they, they go. Yeah. That's that's it. Like that that like that, that's the end of the deal. You know what I'm saying? And that our art is good enough to show to people and it's good enough to to do for everyone. But because we the uh, we go through all the things and all the motions that we like that we go through anyway, like trying to get help and support from other people or whatever. It's like we're like given a slap in the face or, or we're like given beans. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like there are many times, not just in the Bahamas, there are many instances of people always wanting to like shortchange people who are artists. You know, like if I wanted to do a magic show for someone, how much does this cost? It costs this much. Oh, I can't get this for this much or whatever. But, you know, it's always something like that. And I think it's because the idea is that it's something intangible, something that someone can't hold or physically. I can't have. take it home with me. I can't, I can't wrap it up yeah, and you know, throw it home I can't, and open it up you know and what I'm eat, saying? It, eat the last half. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, for all intents and purposes, we're talking about a country where it's okay to charge $1,700 for PlayStation 5, but it's not okay for me at World Axe and the Magician to charge $1,700 for my magic show. Yeah, or, because but, you know but, but, but I can be honest with you. I I am going to spend all of my life on the PlayStation. <laughs> right? And my my kids don't know it or not, but yeah, but I'm not buying them another computer. They mm. can, right? So they are minimum pay, you know, there's a minimum pay regulation. Mm. There there's there is structure, mm -hmm. there's infrastructure, mm -hmm. there's regul there are regulations mm. and there is a culture mm. of appreciation for artists and the role that they play. Mm. And be because we appreciate them, we understand their value mm. and then the need to protect them. But here's the, here's the problem mm. therein lies in the Bahamas. We have not created a proper culture for artists here in the Bahamas. Because a lot of artists in the Bahamas, like a lot of people here in the Bahamas suffer like I call the biggest identity crisis the world has never seen. because. We're down to like DJs who hit the radio stations and start talking like Jamaicans on the mic. We talking like to rappers who like rap mm -hmm. uh, like in American accents or whatever. It's like no one stays true to their person, their persona, the Bohemian persona, which is why I like Bohemian Tree. I love Bohemian Tree. I, and I like Solo because yeah. they, they don't put on an accent. 
I they talk the when they rap and they talk. They I don't talk. go in water. You know, right? <laughs> yeah. that is quintessential. Quintessential. That's the word. That you know, quintessential. I love. Language. I love artists that do that. That stick true to, to how they sound. They don't put on a, a, a sound. You know, they don't. They don't now, put on an now, accent. Here's the thing. Uh -huh. Right in that in that tiny space right there. Mm. Right. Let's let's sort of be careful mm. because a lot of our, a lot of us are ontologically American. Yeah. A lot of us are as American as we are Bahamian. Mm -hmm. And is it fair to say to a young person, because I'm inclined to say it, okay. right? I ask him, is it fair to say to a young artist, you sound too American to be authentic Bahamian? No, because I think when, see there are different levels of, I am not a singer. I am not a bit, and when when a lot of people sing, that I've heard someone say that when people sing, we all sound the same when we sing. Mm -hmm. We don't sound the same when we talk. It's kind of the equivalent of we could all sing together. We can't all talk together. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So there are d there's different levels of sound. So I don't mean that in yeah. in those respects, but I don't think that's fair because that's not fair to the, to, to that person's art right. or style. But now or for me, at the same mm -hmm. time, right? Because I'm a person who's inclined to say that. Mm -hmm. What I've noticed, particularly with hip hop, right, mm -hmm. um, is I, I'm witnessing a Bahamian artist try to stretch an um, uh, uh, an American accent mm -hmm. over over their Bahamian selves. Why? Exactly. Why? And and, and 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 it's in that it's in that space where it naturally sounds awkward. Mm -hmm. They're Bahamian rappers who rap with an American af affect, mm -hmm. and it sounds great because it's a natural sound. Mm -hmm. And those same rappers could rap with a Bahamian affect. Mm -hmm. And it sounds great because it's a, a natural sound, something that comfortably comes out of their mouth. Mm -hmm. But there is a there is a space in performance where you could see it's a stretch, guy. Yeah, it, it, it ain't what you yeah, do. it's it's like like what are you doing? Yeah, you know. Yeah, and 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 that's where the critique sits. Not that your mm -hmm. work is not valid mm -hmm. because you sound American, but it ain't good because mm -hmm. it sound awkward. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. And I yeah. think. I think that this is this that that held, holds on to the type of culture that we actually need to present to the Bahamas because it's like we need to have a structure in place among artists where we can gauge like who is like you say you say you want this much for your performance how good is that yeah is that worth what you're asking for yeah. and, and and let me see or, or whatever like a, we have to be able to vet each other, but do it properly and in a proper fashion. So, and we also, and I think we, what we also have to do is we also have to take into consideration that art in the Bahamas does not just encompass music. Music is not just art. Right. So, Entertainment right. is everywhere. One you of know? the critiques that didn't come out in mm. the protest of the independence celebration, mm. right? It was sort of like, why not the secular? Oh. Singers, oh, that was the gospel. But that, what about that, the, that that should not have happened. What about like that? the cultural performers? That no, right? that should not have happened like that. Because if I wanted to see my money just go up and disappear and smoke, I mm. would have called the magician. That should that, that should <laughs> <laughs> that should not that that independent celebration should not have happened like that because it it it, it someone painted a picture. Uh, one of my friends painted a picture. Like suppose um I am a Bahamian, right, and I am for all intents and purposes Muslim. Yeah. Right, what if I was watch the independence? Like, yes. like, but so, 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 all that says to me as a Muslim, if like, if I was hypothetically speaking, if I was Muslim or something, like, like, so this country don't belong, to don't me. belong to me I because it's, it. you know what I'm saying. Is that, and then there's this whole how, Christian more nature. Uh -huh. Do we need a union? Do artists need a a, a structure? We, a organizational structure. We have a structure, but we, we we have we have the makings of a structure. Let me okay. say that we because everyone everyone goes and points fingers to like the entertainers union or whatever. Uh -huh. But in my years of growing up, and in my years of, of of dealing with the entertainers union, it, it's it's never it's never been a decent experience. I so you. so. Let me leave it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll. I'll leave it there for lack of a, a thing or whatever. Because the, the tourism development corporation, uh -huh. right, is creating this. I try to get these people on my show from the day before yesterday. Uh -huh. An organization called Base, right, which is the Bahamas Association of Shore Experiences, uh -huh. and this is for. It seems to be like a, a, a agency for tourism vendors, mm -hmm. vendors who work with tourism, right. I think we need a similar structure 
for artists and creatives and cultural performers mm. who want to participate in tourism. I'll take that further because but, because that's yeah, where yeah. that's where I was leading to. Bang, bang, bang. Because here's the thing, right? And um, I, I got a message from my friends, Lavinia and, and Oma in the States. And the reason why I picked them up is because I spoke to them about this. It is, and I have to say from my, everyone's listening to me, I have to say from my own personal experiences, I am not saying it, like my experience is everyone else's. Yeah. But it is much easier to busk in America and get a permit for that than it is in, here in Nassau. Because here in Nassau, to the for to those who don't know what busking is, busking is the equivalent is the is what it what it is when uh uh you go to the states and you see um entertainers on the street or in the subway stations yeah, anywhere like they're in the yeah, streets yeah. in the subway stations whatever you see whole bands I, when I was yeah. in New York it was there's a whole band that used to be in the subway playing stuff and having the tip jar out and everything like that. I should be able to do that much easier here, but it's not. It really isn't because in my experience, when I asked to be on Bay Street, I, I didn't I took the I first took the approach of I'd rather say sorry than 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 than, yeah, yeah, than, yeah, than, yeah, than yeah, not yeah. than not do it at all. So I I went on Bay Street, started doing some magic for some tourists, and I gathered a huge crowd. And here comes three police officers wanting to arrest me because they think I'm gambling because I have a deck of cards in my hand. So I'm like, whoa, I'm, I'm a magician. So I had to show my business card. I was like, hey, all right, cool. So what do I have to do? He's like, oh, well, you need a permit. Where do I go to get this permit? Oh, well, you go to this place. So I went to that place. They was like, oh, well, you need to go to such and such to go get this. I was like, all right, cool. So I went to such and such to get that. If you have to go, if you want this, you have to go to NIB and do this and get a letter of good standing and thing of them, bring all that back here and do whatever. All right, cool. Go on to go do that. Come here. Oh, well, you need to get a business license. Oh, you need to get a business license and bring that to Look how I can get a lock up every so day for you, selling Chichani. So you, <laughs> so you need to bring all that. And then when you get, when you go through the days and months and money, because some of these things, yeah, most, yeah, these yeah. things don't cost, they ain't free. They yeah. cost money. When you go through all of these things and the money and when you finally present all these things and my, what happened to me when I said, all right, cool. I have all the stuff you asked me to get. Here is it. Can I go on Bay Street now? Oh, no. We can't have you on Bay Street. I, why not? Y'all had me up and down. To go and, like, it should never be like that. And this is what... Two this things. is what That ain't no truth. Th th we can push it. Hold on. This is what I am getting at. Like, this is what artists need. Because my friend St Stephen, who is being on the show, yeah, Shin, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's like, there's... He reminded me of something that I had to ask my, my parents and... and some older folks about Bay Street was different before I was born. There yeah. were no cars on Bay Street. Mm -hmm. It was just an area like where there was the straw market and you know whatever. Yeah. And he would like there would be performers out there sometimes too. But like Bay Street should be that if tourists want to come here, they don't no, want so to keep here's, coming. Now it's what the issue is. Bay uh, Street about to be like that. I need y'all to understand. Bay, Bay Street going back to that. I got you. But so go Bay Street should not like. Tourists, when tourists come over, they want an experience. They don't want to come and see, and try to shop at, sto at, at at stores that are already in America. They don't. So want we finished the interview, and I'm out here with Aaron again. Thanks for having me on, Aaron. I appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely, Absolutely, and it's an important discussion. You know, uh -huh. we really it's a lot of different discussions happening at the same time mm -hmm. that are necessary to bring us to the central point. Yep. Right? We need both the private sector, the public sector, and society to understand and appreciate the importance of culture and cultural artisans and creatives as the center of life. Amen. The politicians ain't gonna make a policy move until it's politically expedient. It's mm -hmm. not politically expedient until business people tell them it's good for business. Mm -hmm. And society says, we ain't mad at it, we'll vote for you. There you go. Right? So. We need to have all of these conversations, and the most important conversation is the conversation with the Bahamian, mm. so that they can understand the value of this their own cultural production, mm. right? They can understand the value of that Bahamian joke mm. in the Bahamas, mm. particularly if a government insists that we're going to be a tourism nation then give the people the tools to be powerful and act with agency in their own country. Yep. Why would you force people to perform in tourism 
and then tell them you ain't even funny you can't tell a joke we have to get an american comedian to come mm -hmm. in and tell a joke and your grammy is have these people in church laughing every sunday wondering <laughs> if jesus or the devil coming for her this week <laughs> it don't make any sense you disempowering your people oh man you're like maintaining a conversation that is false mm. that's why having chelly on the last couple of days was important because mm. people don't understand the danger of allowing a false narrative to be perpetuated even if you think it ain't really doing any damage mm. And thank you, Aaron. Yes, mate. I can't wait to come back. Thank you. You're coming back. Call me back. Call, I, I could be back on. Time for me to get my ass on. So I can see y'all later.